Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about creating video effects in iClone. So I'm going to demo some of the stuff that uh, is included with Motion Montage uh, Volume 1 and 2 here. And we're also going to talk about how you can create your own effects uh, for use in a 3D scene or a virtual uh, TV or film environment. So let's go ahead and take a look at Motion Montage Volume 2, which is what I have on the screen here right now. You can see there's a whole bunch of stuff included with this, including some TV walls, which we'll uh, get to in just a moment. You can see collapsing walls, falling walls. We have uh, walls with cool animations and stuff like that. Uh, there's also, you know, paper animations. Uh, you can take a look at some of these book stuff, like uh, flipping pages, uh, flipping pages softly, and envelope stuff. You know, useful for commercialization in, in various ways. Uh, whether or not you corporate or not, or for if it's for a personal project, uh, we also have stuff like this, like these prisms, and you can apply various videos to each face of these objects as well. So keep that in mind. We'll talk about these more in a moment. I'm just going to close this for now, and let's go into iClone, and I've loaded up some of the projects uh, that are included with Motion Montage Volume One, so the previous one. Uh, this Cube Zero Five one is currently the one I have loaded up, and you can see if I play back, we have some. Funky cam movement, some uh, really cool matrix-like uh, particle effects, as well as some lens flares and everything. So you can use these as a template, and you can also apply any video or image you want to any of the faces on these cubes as well. Let's take a look at another one here, maybe a bit of a better example for a, a film production uh, scenario. Uh, so you can see here, this would be good for like a beginning of a documentary or a film. And again, you can apply a video to each separate uh, number on these film rolls as well. You can totally customize them. So speaking of customization, I'm going to show you one last project and we're going to customize this one in a, in a, a way here. So let's go back to the, uh, load up this panel 05. You can see this one I like because it pays, uh, focuses on each individual number and then we get sort of a camera pullback with all the numbers together. So let's take a look at how we can customize this. Let's first switch from our switch camera to our preview camera here. And let's move a little bit ahead so we can actually see something. And uh, let's zoom out. You can see now basically what's happening is all these numbers are coming forward at separate times. And we're going to apply a video to each one of these uh, faces. Now when you apply the video in the timeline is very important because that's when it's going to be begin to play. Uh, so for example, number four is the first one that comes up. Let's go way back to like frame, I don't know, frame two or something like that so we can see. And let's go to our videos here. I have some Shutterstock videos loaded up. I'm going to load in some uh, makeup, some basic makeup uh, videos here. All I need to do is left click and drag them onto those specific faces and you can see it applies like that. So four comes up and then uh, one comes up after that. So four will begin playing right away. And let's go to uh, back to our uh, folder here and let's before one even comes forward, let's actually apply a video to it and so that when it does come forward, we'll see a little bit of animation, the eyes opening there, and then three, we'll do the same thing. So three, when it's still get to come, we'll apply maybe this makeup uh, video to uh, three. And then the next one, I believe, is five. Yep, we'll go to five and apply yet another separate video to five. We can apply this uh, kind of sketchy looking video of a girl right there and then um, after this one is applied we'll go to number two. All right and two, we're gonna have one more. We'll use this makeup or nail polish one there. All right so basically if we go back into switch mode what ha what's happened now is if we play back you can see each video will play, will be in playing at a separate time and then it kind of goes back to all of them like that. So if I press F3 and go into my timeline Let's go to our scene manager here and uh, take a look at the plane. If we select object related track, we can see it right here. And we can take a look at, um, you know, if we go to uh, our video tracks, we can see if we scroll down when each video starts uh, in the timeline. So each plane, if we go to our materials over here, each plane has its own little track in the uh, video uh, track selection. So you can see we have this one starting at this point, this one starting on plane 01, and this one starts on plane 03, which is right here. Uh, sorry, not that one, this one here. This one is the frame, and we'll talk about the frame uh, right now actually. So with the frame, say for example after we're done all our shenanigans over here, we want to have the frame, which is this black frame, um, kind of highlight, kind of glow. 
Uh, what I want to do first is go back to frame one, and let's apply a glow map to our uh, frame. Let's go ahead and double click on the glow channel and apply a glow map to our frame. Now, if we go to our uh, preview camera, you can see right here we have sort of a glowing, but it's sort of like uh, bluish. And that's because our diffuse channel right here has a texture in it, and it's a black texture. So it's not going to, or a really dark blue texture. So the glow channel isn't going to be able to glow as much as we want. If we take the strength down on that, you can see the result right there. We get some crazy lens flare. So let's just go back to uh, frame one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that diffuse map right there. Let's just trash it. And let's take our glow channel all the way down to zero, okay? because we don't want it to be doing anything yet. And if we play back, oops, I guess we had to uh, press F3 going to our timeline. Let's choose, instead of video, let's choose our materials now, because uh, whenever you modify a material over here, it'll be applied to your material channel. Ah, yes, you can see that uh, we have the glow at 100% here. So let's click and drag that way to the beginning, and then we'll change it back to a strength of zero. Okay, so this is what our frame will look like without a glow channel applied. If we just play back, let's actually switch to a uh, camera switch mode so we can see the whole thing. Yo. It's a really good commercialization sample that you can customize. Now let's start our glow map right over here. Um, let's just go ahead and apply a value of 1 to the glow channel, and then to about here, we'll have a strength of uh, 64. Nothing too extreme, maybe 70. And then here we'll pull it back again, back to a regular value like 15 or something. So what that created is sort of a glow flash like that. Okay, so... Nice little boom. And you can adjust the timing of that by moving these various keyframes around as well. Um, so that's how you can, you know, apply a nice glow to your frame right there. And if you wanted to, uh, you know, you can change the type of uh, HDR flare as well. Let's go to our visual tab. And uh, if we go down to, uh, or go up rather, to HDR effects, you can see we have cross screen, we have spectral cross, we can spectral sunny. I kind of like this one right here. Um, different types of lens flares. This one's kind of cool for a luxurious makeup type of commercial. And then maybe later on we can uh, make them all invisible. So what, what I want to do in that case is, uh, you know, you want to go to each plane, uh, the diffuse channel, and you can take the uh, opacity all the way down to zero. So I'll get rid of the, uh, you know, the middle uh, video right there. You can see we can change the opacity down to zero. Um, obviously, we'd maybe want to start at 99 and then go from here to here and take it to zero. So it'll be something like this. Get, get rid of the middle uh, frame right there. And so on and so forth. And you can do the, uh, the same thing for the rest of the videos. But we're not going to get too much into detail on that because I want to move on to the next sample, which is what we're going to be doing right now. And we're going to be creating our own video effects for use in like a TV uh, or advertisement type scenario. And for that, we're going to close down our timeline. We're going to be using the TV walls in the props tab. So included with a you know a motion montage is a whole bunch of uh, props as well. Um, 3D alphabet cues, film strips. You can see the regular ones right here. Um, apart from their projects, I'm going to go to motion montage volume two and use one of those cool TV walls that we had. All right, so let's double click this TV fall walling and TV wall falling. Now let's press the F hot key to focus on it. It's actually up in the sky right now. If I press control G, um, you can see that, uh, um, so if I right click it right now and I select uh, perform and I select fall, it's going to fall down to our uh, scene root, which is down there. All right. So let's just control Z and undo that. Let's keep it up here for now. So say, for example, what I wanted to do is I wanted this to appear. Um, I wanted the opposite of fall. So at the very, very beginning, what I want is I want to right click it and select perform and rise. OK, so it's going to rise like that. We have a little bit of a delay a few frames before that where it has to go back down. So something like that. We can click and drag this little green triangle to have our project start right there and then it'll 
every time we play back it'll start from there okay so the video I want to apply to this right here is uh, let's go ahead and add our video in so I'm gonna go over to my video folder here there's actually a separate one here uh, say for example I created this video or this uh, little title video in a separate uh, tutorial. I'm going to left click and drag this title video and drag it to our TV wall there. And then if it appears like this, we have Mid Talk with Christine McDonald. All right. And then after that's finished, we can have it fall again. So let's right click and select perform fall and it'll fall back off the screen. Now what I want to do to add a little bit into this is I want to create a camera and when I create my camera, I want my camera to be behind the MedTalk banner here. So let's go ahead and zoom our camera in. Well, we need to create a camera first. Let's go to create camera and let's zoom it in past the MedTalk TV wall. All right. And what I'm going to do is press F3 and go into my timeline. And you can see my camera has a transform keyframe right here. I'm going to click and drag that transform keyframe to frame one because that's where we want the camera to be at the beginning of our project. So we can kind of estimate how long it takes that TV wall to reappear and we can zoom out and go to a little distance like this. Okay, so what that's going to do is we're going to have the camera move back as the TV wall appears. So we get that sort of kind of cool effect like that. So let's play that back in real time. All right, so that's the advantage of using like a 3D prop you know, in a 3D environment and using the camera work as well. So you can imagine right now there's like a, you know, a talk show going on behind this uh, thing right here because we can export this as a transparent video. So keep that in mind. And now we've, our, our camera will zoom in to the actors or the TV show or whatever. All right, so that's a really cool example. We can do another quick one here with the, with the same uh, thing. Let's just go ahead and start a new project. And uh, let's choose this collapsing wall. And the collapsing wall will do it the opposite direction. So let's press F to uh, focus on our uh, wall right there. And say, for example, at this point, we want to um, let's uh, have our, uh, whoops, wrong folder there. All right, so title video. Right here, we can, we can have this appear anyway, uh, anyhow in our product or in our project. Uh, so let's go ahead and click and drag this onto our video right there. So it's going to start like this. Now, say for example, I wanted to uh, rotate this entire wall. Well, I can do that. Let's move it um, using the E hotkey. You can bring up this gizmo. Uh, let's move it to about uh, 90 over here. There's a value of enter in a value of 90 on the Z axis. And I'm going to create another camera here as well. And uh, so as uh, we play back, maybe we want to rotate for about that length, 90 frames or so. And we can move it to about here. Um, let's just enter in a Z value of zero. So we're facing directly forward. So we have something like this. Okay, so as, as it turns around, it says mid-talk. And uh, we can, at that same time, we can probably zoom in as well. When the wall finishes uh, moving, which is about here, we can be zoomed in a little bit more. So something like this right here. All right, so then we have something like this. Med Talk, Christine McDonald. And then we can uh, right click this one and perform and collapse. And then we have this collapsing wall right here. And at the end of that collapse, so as the collapse is beginning, what I can do is maybe at this point in the timeline, let's, uh, as the class begins, I'm going to open up my camera right here. And if we move the camera ever so slightly, just a little bit forward like that, it's going to add a keyframe right there, transform keyframe. Ta-da! All right. And as we break through the wall, we can kind of, you know, as the wall has finished breaking, we can go to about here and we can zoom in, you know, past all the debris of the broken wall. And then we have an effect like this. So the camera movement stops right there and then boom. And onto our virtual studio back here. 
All right, so again, you can export that as a transparent video. Really cool, and we'll talk about how to use that in a separate tutorial. But that's really all I want to show you, how you're using these TV walls um, as, you know, intros, whether it be for, a, you know, whether it be for a med medical talk uh, scenario or, say, for example, you have, uh, if we go to our Shutterstock, we can do a commercial video as well. Um, you know, like this car video. Uh, if we go back to uh, a frame like this, we can uh, still apply that car video to the front of that uh, object right there, or the, of the wall right there. And then we have something like this. So, car talk with John McDonald. And we have something like this, and there's a studio behind. All right, so that's kind of a cool a couple of examples of how you can use these motion montage TV walls. Now, I want to show you one final, uh, final quick effect that we can uh, do really quickly here. Let's just go ahead and delete this TV wall. And I'm going to go down to motion montage volume 3 now. So, motion montage volume 3 right here. Let's just load in a, uh, there's lively motion systems multiple right here. Um, these are just basically dummies that we can apply. I'm going to double click this multiple 13 here. And you don't see anything right now because it's actually a dummy. So let's press Control D so we can make that dummy appear. And this Motion Montage Volume 3 actually comes with some prop letters as well. So we can go to three symbols, alphabet capitalized. And let's go ahead and uh, use a few letters here. So maybe something like uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We'll just double click these. Uh, I'm going to load in three letters here. F, uh, fun. So there's our U and then our N. All right, so we have three letters. We're going to attach each one of these individual letters to a single dummy. So let's go to our scene, select our F, and press W, and move it over here. So F over here, and our N we can move to this dummy over here. Because what this uh, dummy is going to do, if we right-click the dummy and select Perform, we can go Start. And we have something like that. And we can just switch to a preview camera here. So we don't have any camera animation. And uh, so basically we have, you know, some letters coming in. So that's kind of like an entry. Uh, of, you can use, you can attach objects to those. You can attach uh, these 3D letters, which I'm going to do right now. So let's go ahead and uh, link pick parent. Pick that dummy for the U. Pick parent. Pick that dummy for the N. Pick parent and pick that dummy. And then we can press Control D. And, uh, oops, not sure why that uh, N turned around there. We'll just go back to uh, frame one here. There we go. I'm not sure why that, uh, to right click that, remove object animation. And uh, we uh, play back. Okay, so we have to reapply this uh, convert, perform, start. All right, and then we have to go back and uh, press control D and attach these one more time. Not sure what happened there. Let's link this one, link this one, and pick parent for the last one. All right, and then control D, and let's see what kind of fun we can get up to here. All right, fun right there. And you can export this as a video and use it in a 3D environment as well. You can change the camera angle if you want and, you know, have fun like that. Uh, so that's basically all we're going to cover in this tutorial. I just wanted to show you a couple of quick ways you can use the motion montage uh, library of props and effects to create some cool stuff. And I'll be using some of these in other tutorials, uh, so stay tuned for that.